My name is Ian Patterson from Good morning. Morning Jazz. Uh, Mario, Good morning, you Ian. introduce yourself, please. And tell us where you uh, are. I'm Mario Forte. I'm a violinist. Um, and um, yeah, what else can I say? I'm uh, based in New York, but right now in quarantine in France, which is where I'm originally from. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, to make it short. OK. Thanks a lot. And Bartosz, same to you, please. Hello, uh, I'm Bartosz Dvorak. I'm a violin player too. Uh, I'm living in Warsaw now and, and I'm here for quarantine. So yeah, that's all for now. Okay, thanks. And we're waiting for a, a, a third violinist to join us, uh, Mateusz Smoczynski. He's having a little bit of uh, problems connecting at the moment, but we hope he'll join us shortly. Uh, I'm in quarantine in Ireland, in the north of Ireland, and we're here today to chat about uh, what unites us, certainly the, particularly the, the violinists here, is this Dignif Seifert International Jazz Violin Competition, because these three gentlemen have all won this competition. The first one was held in 2014, and then it's a biannual competition. Uh, so Bartosz won the first one, Mateusz Smoczynski, the Invisible Man at the moment, he won the second one in 2016, and uh, Mario won the competition uh, in 2018. So we'll talk a, a, a little bit about, uh, speaking of Seifert, about the competition itself, your, your experiences um, preparing for the competition, the actual experience of, of participating there, and meeting all these incredible violinists from, from all over the world. And I'd also like to ask you for some advice, personal advice for anybody participating in this year's competition or who'd like to participate in, in future competitions. But because we're all in a very strange situation, everybody in the world practically, um, in, in quarantine, I'd like to ask you a question. And after the first competition in 2014, the first Spignif Seifert International Jazz Violin Competition, I interviewed uh, Tomoko Omura, the New York based um, Japanese violinist. And she was telling me about how, how difficult things were initially when she first moved to New York to get gigs, to, to build a career for herself. And I think she's, she's done very well, but initially she said it was difficult. And she said something to me which strikes a chord with me now. And that was that she said that sometimes hardships can act as fuel. And I just want to ask you, I'll start with you, Mario, uh, if this difficult period of quarantine is in any way uh, inspiring your, your, your writing, your music or your, your thought process? Personally, it's even more that it's inspiring. It's, it finally gives me some time to work on it because in fact, uh, especially recently, those past months have been such busy by running all over the city constantly for playing gigs, which I was also happy to do. But I was definitely missing time to work for myself. And uh, to be honest, I mean, except if you're extremely rich and can just take it off for a few months in your New York life, but which is very uncommon. Usually just New York is great to play to, 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 for a bunch of things, but uh, when you need a kind of, um, uh, you know, just uh, going down a bit and having a month or two, like an artistic residency or something like that, but well, it's pretty hard to do there. And, uh, but I mean, I just hope this uh, uh, COVID situation will not end up as a huge tragedy, but other than that, for now, to me, as to all my friends, mm. it give us time to work for ourselves. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Okay. And I and I think it's also a good breath somehow for the frenzy, the, the frenzy of of the world, especially the the the, the, the metropole. Uh, this calm down was needed in the world. Uh, it's yeah, uh, unfortunate. Yeah. Yeah, that's an, an interesting perspective. Yeah. Um, Bartosz, if I can come to you, please. Uh, 
same, yes. same question. Uh, do you find this, uh, um, uh, this extra time on your hands useful creatively? Uh, you know, Ian, for me, it's, it's, it's very hard time because, um, of course, as Mario said, uh, this is a good, we are in good situation because, because we have a lot of time. So, so we can, we can work um, on some, on some things, but for me, it's very hard because I love nature. I love, uh, I love move, you know, I need, I need some changes all the time. I need some triggers to 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 be inspired, and for me, it's not so easy. You know, I'm mm. I'm I'm trying to do my best uh, yeah. to 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 do the things, but it's mm. uh, I feel kind of kind of like frozen. You know? Yeah. It's of course I have a lot of time. I I can practice. I can practice. Mm. I can do a lot of things. I can recording stuff, but mm. but. Uh, it's it's hard. It's yeah, hard, it's hard to find external imp inspiration. Yeah, there. yeah, that's that's true. You know, I'm, I I love, for, for example, I love to ride my motorbike, and yeah. I, I I can't do that now because you know, mm -hmm. it's almost impossible. Of course, you can do it, but it's 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 not it's not it's not good. It's not safe. Yeah, mm -hmm. and and do you have a Bartosz? Do you have a um, a, a practice routine where you are now? Do you practice a certain amount of time per day at the same time every day? Do you have a discipline like that? You know, it depends. Some weeks I I I making decision to to have some time like for from from noon uh, sometime uh, it's a it's a good time for me to practice and mm -hmm. but sometimes uh, in some weeks I'm just just waiting for the good moment. You know, I'm yeah. Mm, I have some some plan uh, to do some stuff uh, uh, per day, and I'm just I'm just trying to do it, you know. Mm -hmm. Okay, thanks, Bartosz. Mateusz, welcome back. Hello, I couldn't join you. I don't know why, but uh, fortunately, I'm here again. Not to worry. We're glad we're glad you're here. Uh, I don't know if you caught the first question. It was just to introduce yourself and to say where you are. Uh, right now, I'm uh, close. To Uh, we've. Can you hear me? Ah, okay, you you're hear back me? now. Yes, okay. again? Yeah. Again? Uh, yes, I'm uh, here close to Warsaw in my parents' uh, house right now. Uh -huh. uh, today I'm going back to Warsaw to my uh, apartment mm -hmm. to work a little bit uh, yeah. because uh, we all have much time these days. <laughs> yeah. But uh, there is also a lot of work to do, uh, and mm -hmm. I really uh, want to do and use this time uh, for me. I have to write PhD these days because I started okay. my PhD. So uh, I thought because me and Bartosz, we supposed to be in Russia these days. Mm -hmm. We supposed to have like one month. Uh, yeah, you're breaking up a little bit. Yeah, so okay, we okay. supposed to, uh, we supposed to have a uh, uh, tour in Russia with Bartosz, and I was wondering when when I will write my PhD. <laughs> so mm -hmm. the answer came naturally. Right mm -hmm. now, you sit and write your PhD. You, you, you have mm -hmm. time. I have to finish it till end of May. So mm -hmm. yeah, so the quarantine is good time for for do that. Yeah, can you tell us what your PhD is is on? What it's about? Uh, I am writing about this. Uh, Maybe that will be better. Can you hear yeah, me? I, I okay. Can hear you. Mm -hmm. I don't know why my uh, headphones broke the signal. So uh, I'm writing about a uh, few styles uh, in the music these days that they are like uh, going through. Like mm -hmm. uh, these days, you cannot be just the classical musicians or jazz musician. You have to play uh, like uh, in between crossover. So I'm yeah. writing about crossover music, uh, and I'm describing my violin concerto, because my violin concerto, Adam Sapo, uh, I wrote uh, two years ago. It's all about a uh, few styles. Uh, I, I wrote it for me, 
And there is a lot of uh, inspiration from Karol Szymanowski, John Adams, American composer. Also, uh, uh, we uh, also uh, also Zbigniew Seifert, of course. Mm -hmm. And uh, so I combine all the styles together. Uh, mm -hmm. Also bluegrass, some uh, mm -hmm. disco, all things that I am interested in. Uh, also some turtle and quartet stuff. Uh, I put in my violin concerto, mm -hmm. and I'm. I'm describing this, uh, how the styles are moving and uh, crossover between. Yeah, that's, that's uh, very interesting. I'll maybe bring in uh, Mario and Bartosz about that because you know, writing for a, you know, a jazz webzine, I think the, the jazz media have a, a tendency to, to talk about, you know, okay, Mateusz Moczynski, the jazz violinist. Uh, or Mario Forte, the jazz violinist, if we see you in a jazz context. But probably the reality is that you play so many different styles of music that maybe this label is, is too restrictive for you personally. I mean, do any of you describe yourselves as jazz musicians or is it just more general, Mario? Personally, yes. I don't think in my case it's restrictive, especially because mm. jazz it's such a non-restrictive term. Mm. So we have to understand what it means. And in fact, I would I don't like so much this um, under name of uh, jazz violin thing because mm. I think the identity of it it's still a bit uh, questionable. Mm. But I would definitely uh, consider myself as a jazz musician and someone mm. who has some uh, real jazz life. Yeah. with precisely all the extension that these terms has and into jazz i do in fact a bunch of things i still play some classical music and chamber music but mm -hmm. other than that into jazz uh, i have um, in new york a band of gypsy jazz there is mm -hmm. people from brazilian music and more contemporary music i play with things who are more related to john zorn music mm -hmm. just those three examples or very different stuff yeah. improv and because there is improvisation we call it jazz so in the end, yes, I think I'm a jazz guy. Okay, okay, thanks, Mario. Um, Bartosz, what do you think? Uh, you know, for, for me, it's, um, I think it's, um, um, maybe, maybe I will say it that way. Um, jazz music is, is uh, very close to me because, you know, it's very, uh, it's very, it's my music because, um, there is a lot of freedom, I think, from, from all that all that kinds of of, of music. Uh, this is music where you can find a lot of freedom. So I like that. I love that because I, I like to, to to feel to feel free, um, and this is very important for me. But you can find it uh, in whole improvised music. So so now I think. I feel like just 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 violinist, you know. I'm I'm not thinking about about me like about jazz violinist, mm -hmm. um, and I think it's it's quite normal because uh, we all here are like separate personalities in music. Mm -hmm. So when we are personalities, we are not like jazz violinist or rock mm -hmm. violinist. We are just we are you know Mateusz Moczynski. Mm -hmm. We are Mario Forte. So, so, so that's, that's the point, I think. Yeah. Okay, great. Thanks very much for that, guys. Um, let's talk a little bit now about um, Spigniew Seifert. And what I'd like to know is, um, when did you first hear of, of him, just by name? When did you first hear his music? And what was your impression of, of him? And I'm thinking maybe that in the case of Bartosz and Mateusz, maybe you heard of Spigniew Seifert earlier than Mario, I may be wrong, just because he's a, a Polish um, icon. Mm -hmm. But could you, Mateusz, could you maybe tell me a little bit about when you first came across him? Yeah, my story with Spigniew Seifert is uh, pretty uh, uh, nice because I was in a high school with a uh, son of Zbigniew Namysłowski, with uh, Jacek Namysłowski. Ah. So uh, the story is funny because uh, uh, Jacek Namysłowski recommended me to go uh, for the jazz camp uh, with his father, Zbigniew Namysłowski. Mm. And uh, 
we were colleagues and uh, we were playing the same band. So when we played the jazz camp in Kalatówki, Janusz Muniak came to me and he told me, Mateusz, have you heard about Zbigniew Zeppert? And I told him, no, no, I never heard this guy. I'm really not interested in jazz violin. I'm more interested in the music of John Coltrane and the saxophonist. Mm -hmm. and, how, old uh, were you, how old were you at this jazz camp? It was, I was 16 years old or 15 okay. years old, something like this. And uh, because Janusz Muniak told me, you sound very similar to the beginning of Zyphert. <laughs> I told him, I never heard this guy. Mm -hmm. So uh, Janusz Muniak recommended to me and after jazz camp, uh, we came back to Warsaw and Jacek Namysłowski uh, bring uh, some LPs of Zbigniew Zeifer for me from his father, uh, Archives. And uh, I, heard, I, I heard him first time when I was 16, something like this. And I was so impressed mm -hmm. that somebody can play on the violin in the way that I'm interested in, that uh, he changed really my world and uh, he changed my thinking about jazz and uh, jazz mm -hmm. violence spe uh, especially you know mm -hmm. in my age in 16 years when i was 16 years old i was thinking to change to switch instrument to some more <laughs> like coltrane like tenor saxophone or maybe trumpet but okay. uh, i was playing on the violin and i tried to play like coltrane so, mm -hmm. But when I heard the beginning of Zyphert, uh, everything changed. I, I decided to stay with my instrument. Mm -hmm. Okay, that's very interesting. We, we should maybe say to anybody who's watching on YouTube or, or Facebook uh, that, that you know, speaking of Seifert, um played in, in the Thomas Stanko, the first important group in 73. And, and that he had his own band more or less at the same period uh, and then from 70 until his uh, death in 1979 from from cancer at the age of 32 he led his own projects so solo projects mostly playing with a lot of um really great musicians both both the great po polish musicians some of whom mateusz has just mentioned but also names you know like uh, glenn moore and jack dijonette uh, John Schofield uh, and, and people like that. So he, ha he had a, um, an international reputation outside of Poland. And well known in Poland after by a later generation um, because it was difficult, I think, maybe to find his, his records and a lot of his records didn't come on to CD until maybe only 15 years ago, the last 10 or 15 years. Um, but his, his um, Tommy Stanko described him as, as Poland's national treasure. Um, you know, so that, that's, that's a little bit about Zbigniew Cypher. Um, Bartosz, if I can come to you, when did you first hear Zbigniew Cypher and what were your impressions, please? So, uh, as I could remember, first time of... Uh... Yeah, it was first time for sure. Uh, and it was uh, uh, like Mateusz in high school. And uh, my uh, teacher in high school, my violin teacher, he was a very good, uh, good, very good teacher. And he was supporting me a lot. Um, it was kind of weird because I was in classical school, you know, so it was, uh, it was not so, it was not so easy to play, uh, to be a jazz player in, in classical high school, but he was supporting me. And, and he showed me recordings of Zbigniew Zyphert. Mm -hmm. So uh, it was, uh, he was second uh, jazz violinist I've heard because first was uh, Jean-Luc Ponty, mm -hmm. that uh, early recordings uh, uh, on acoustic violin with, uh, with trio. Mm -hmm. And uh, after that, it was Zbigniew Zyphert. And it's, it, it was for me like, you know, wow. Mm -hmm. It, what what he's playing on violin it's mm -hmm. it's it's crazy mm -hmm. because um always if you if you if you are hearing uh, somebody's uh, somebody's jazz violinist first thing for normal like normal people you know is mm -hmm. uh, they they are thinking you are playing gypsy or or something like that you know like mm -hmm very mainstream and old school stuff. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah. So, so speaking of Seifert's music was for me like totally, totally outrageous, you know, wow. Okay, great, thanks. And Mario, same question to you, please. Well, uh, yeah, in. Uh, my, actually my friends, uh, my Polish, uh, you hear me still? Yes. 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 Okay, my Polish friends like Mateusz and Bartosz, there is no Seifert way more than me. Actually, for me, the biggest specialist of Seifert is Mateusz because he even wrote a book with transcription of Seifert. I mean, he, he knows a lot. Personally, um, to be honest, I've been discovering Seifert when I discovered the Seifert competition mainly. Yeah. Then I started to listen to uh, what he did. I like his energy. Uh, that's what I liked the most about this guy. He, he really he really go for it. And uh, he had he had sometimes something pretty burning. And uh, and yeah, he's the the Polish Ponty, the Polish Lockwood. He's the guy. Yeah. And he went to New York um, at the time uh, and where he connected with all those American musicians. So he has been part of a bit of that that arena, that, that scene. Mm -hmm. And unfortunately, because of his reason, he died it so young. If he would yeah. not have this cancer, he would probably have done way more with those guys. Mm -hmm. <coughs> and um, yeah, this is what I can say. Okay, thanks very much. Let's talk a little bit now about the Stignet Seifert uh, International Jazz Violin Competition which we should also say now um, allows cellos and violas as well. Um, and I'd like to know when you applied for the, the competition, if you could talk a little bit about your, your preparation uh, with a view to you know, giving advice for anybody listening who's thinking, oh, I'd like to enter this competition. What, what should I do? Um, Mateusz, how did you prepare for the, the competition? So first I was thinking uh, about repertoire, what should I play? And uh, I, I really knew that uh, the uh, rhythm section, the piano player, uh, drums and bass, they'll be overdone. They'll have like too much work, uh, too much repertoire to, to prepare that I decided to choose tunes that they are stable. Like uh, I can be sure it's not too complicated for them mm -hmm. um, because uh, you know you, uh, I can always <laughs> give complicated tunes, but they can impress the uh, the people listening to me. But uh, when you have only twenty minutes to mm -hmm. do rehearsal with uh, uh, with the band, it can be very risky. So I decide mm -hmm. to play uh, tunes that they should be comfortable even without uh, rehearsals yeah and uh, in the same point i decided to choose uh, uh, 26 2 by john coltrane because mm. this is heavy tune to uh, to play over but most of jazz musicians know it and uh, mm. uh, of course it's clear for them how to play it so i chose something what can impress uh, people listening to me, but uh, mm. still, I I had to be sure that it's uh, it's kind of easy uh, to play mm. for the uh, for the band. So yeah, that was okay. very very important for me. Yeah, and just again, just to um, remind anybody watching at the moment about the the rules, you have to play um, three compositions, two of which are ciphered competitions, and then the third tune can be your own tune, your own yes. original music, or a, a cover version like, like Coltrane, yes? Yes, so I chose, uh, uh, of course, I'm a big fan of John Coltrane, probably I'm much bigger fan of John Coltrane than Seifert. Uh, mm. I love music of Seifert, but Coltrane was my first love of mu in the music. Uh, he really impressed me. So uh, for me, natural was to choose something by Coltrane, and I chose two tunes by Coltrane. One was 26-2 mm. and the second one was Naima. And I, mm. I decided to do something uh, what can sound totally different. And I chose Baritone Violin to play Naima. Mm. And all of these tunes, uh, uh, I recorded Naima before on my uh, new trio recordings. Uh, mm. So it was uh, something that I felt very comfortable with. Mm -hmm. And uh, I knew it will be comfortable also for the rhythm section. Yeah, okay, okay, interesting. And, and Bartosz, what about you? 
uh, you know, you were asking about preparation uh, first. So um, for me, there was truly there was no prepare, no preparation of like specific things, you know, to do before mm -hmm. before before competition. Uh, it was just just I was playing a lot in this time, a lot of jazz um, jazz music with people with people with my friends from. Mm, from college so so i was really uh, into uh, jazz music and mm -hmm. and that's that's all but um but as mateus said uh, very important thing is is to to think about about mm -hmm. competition a little bit uh, technically you know about mm -hmm. not yourself but about about uh, all the things around you like like rhythm section uh, like uh, your sound um so this is this is very important so Mateusz said the very very good uh, good things mm -hmm. because you need to think about that uh the, about that the, the rhythm section uh have a lot of things to do so so you need to to find good way mm -hmm. and to play with with the, the, the guys yeah. so this is the, this is very important i think yeah i mean as a as somebody sitting in the audience watching all the contestants um yeah, i was aware that you know some i'm talking about the, the two editions of the competition that i that i covered and sometimes i felt that the the trio work the pianist the, the bass player the drummer they had a lot of time a lot of space and i was just wondering what was going through your your heads when you're thinking god I only have 20 minutes i i need to be playing here bartos did you feel a a pressure at all when the piano player I mean, they're great musicians they're amazing musicians but when the pianist is taking a long long solo did you ever feel any pressure that you know you you want to start playing again is it difficult to, to remain uh -huh. silent at that time uh i uh, i need to remember because i think no it's uh, you know of course uh I was very focused, a uh, li little nervous because uh, competition was totally is is totally different because uh, I was um, I was doing a lot of competitions in that th this time. So so it's totally different experience mm -hmm. than 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 playing music for people, uh, mm -hmm. you know, like normal concert. Yeah. So I was focused on my on my work, and uh, I think it's. I I I I didn't think about it, you know, about mm -hmm. pianist solo pianist. I just I just trying to be inside music and and think uh, about specific tune, like about uh, you know whole thing. Not not it's like my solo. I need to mm -hmm. uh, everything in in the tune was was uh, important. So mm -hmm. so. I just, I just, I was enjoying, yeah, piano solo and or or bass or or drums because mm. you know we are not talking about specific specific solo. We are talking about uh, soloing, uh, playing solos, uh, you know, about other solos in tune. So yeah, mm. okay. I mean, Matteo talked about song selection, and as you just said, a little message came up on the screen there correcting me that you only have to play one cypher tune for the semi-final and, and one cypher tune for the final and then the other music is your choice um how important was the song selection for for you what was your process your thought process mm. first of course you are you're thinking um you need to you need to play something really really you know really hard and 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 show your your show your uh, show your playing your music your skills your skills yeah your borders or but uh, I think uh, the most important thing was was to play music you you like and the music mm -hmm. you you know you're feeling good into it you know mm -hmm. so so I choose that songs I I choose my favorite songs. Uh, in these times, and I played it, and mm -hmm. and that's all. Mm -hmm. 
Okay. And of course, I was thinking about uh, about that. Um, there will be not good to play too much, you know, mm. because I don't like to play too much. So, so that was my 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 way. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Thanks for that, Mario. What about yes. you? What about your preparation and and uh, song selection, please? So, in fact, um, the first time I did the competition, the first one because I did it twice. So yeah. the one in two thousand sixteen. Uh, I choose the, some tunes that I like. Uh, one was extremely tricky. It was a tune from the Devil and Quintet, and uh, it um, it turned out to be a splendid tragedy because it, this tune was pretty complicated. And in fact, those guys, the rhythmic section, they had like sixty tunes to learn in a very short time. Yeah, so yeah. it was a uh, um, it was a mistake for me. So then the 2018, uh, fifty percent of what I played was solo. And mm -hmm. then, in fact, I went to more uh, easy tune to build. Uh, mm -hmm. And then, anyway, you know, it's jazz. So you can uh, start with an extremely easy standard and make it uh, make it a symphony, make it something uh, extremely mm -hmm. developed. And, you know, it's, it's about the musician and how they play it. Um, mm -hmm. And then, yes, we have uh, one tune uh, of Seifert in semifinal, one in final. And, uh, that was nice for me to discover all those big new safer tune and pick one that I like. I mean, there were many that I liked. Mm -hmm. So, mm -hmm. voilà. okay, yeah, you you, you mentioned uh, that you you won the competition at, at the second time of trying. Mm -hmm. And did, am I right in thinking you came third in two thousand and sixteen? Yeah. Yes. So mm -hmm. I think that was quite a, a a brave thing for you to do to come back to the competition again two years later um, because you know there's the risk that you you wouldn't win again which could have been very discouraging um, so you must have felt especially happy to have to have won it the second time I felt relieved actually yeah. more than happy I was relieved because I knew I didn't have to do it again yeah. And also because, uh, but, but I had in mind it's a competition mm. with, so I wasn't uh, taking it as facing myself. I mean, it's a competition. It's, um, you know, there is the Ternius Monk competition. Mm. And uh, I'm following this competition all the time. They do it because I'm interested to see who, who is around, who is playing, how they play. And I've been thinking that Ternius Monk would never have won the Ternius Monk competition. <laughs> <laughs> you know, never. Because yeah. when I see what they expect and in which, uh, you know, so it's a competition. So um, uh, I think that if I had something to say to the people who want to apply now, I would say, "Bo, well, guys, try, in fact, to put, even though it's extremely hard, but the fact that it's a competition a bit on the side, because then what we all want to hear in a competition or in any concert when you're in the audience, it's people who have fun playing and who feel free to do. And of course, the competitive... Uh, feeling can make you break you know your mm. your uh, let it go as much as you can and uh, good yeah. luck mm. with it okay, that's, that's mm. a good answer so when it comes to song selection two songs that you know and like obviously uh and to try and have fun and not to make it too overly complicated for the rhythm mm. section because as, as the, you've all said uh the rhythm section have to play a huge amount of music over the three or four days of the competition. Um, so maybe it's a, a good thing to not make it too complicated for them, um, but to have fun. Um, I'll stay with you, Mario. Can you tell me a little bit about the, the general experience of participating in the competition at, at Luz La Vice, which is a small, it's like a, it's a, well, it's a Pendereski music center in the middle of the countryside. I mean, the nearest... Yes small town Luz La Vice is about one mile away. You're in the middle of nowhere. Um, it's, tell me a little bit about the atmosphere of the, of the building itself and, and being there for a number of days, please. <laughs> okay, so but Luz La Vice, I like. I like Luz La Vice, it's green all over. There is those people that, uh, I mean, that little town. To be there, I like. 
then the building, I mean, when a building, an institution building look such big, such impressive, I feel a bit oppressed, to be honest. So uh, I spent so long in conservatories in France. Uh, right, we've lost you. Okay, uh, let me switch here to to Mateusz. We'll come back to Mario in just a second while he, hopefully okay. his son comes back. Okay. Uh, Mario, are you with us again? Yes. Yeah, okay, sorry. We lost just the sound there for a second. Yeah, so sorry. you were saying about conservatories in France? Yes, I mean, no, but the, 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 the building is very well made, extremely huge, a lot of room to practice and stuff. Uh, it's very institutional. Uh, they have an amazing, uh, I mean, you saw a um, uh, concert hall where mm -hmm. we did the competition. It, it was five-star class situation for a competition. Mm -hmm. It looked even more impressive because of that, uh, from my perspective. Mm -hmm. um, and since there is nothing so much around and we are all inside of this building, well, the experience to be in there, it's... Um, you need some nap sometime because uh, <laughs> it's... Uh, it's, it's, uh, it's uh, uh, it's an experience for sure, but uh, I, I recommend it, it. It take four or five days. It's good. Would be four or five weeks. I'm not sure I would have been able to, uh, but uh, deal with it. But uh, it was nice. Yeah. Uh, okay. Good. And Bartosz, I'll, I'll come to you now, if I may. What was your general experience of being in the in the music Pendereski Music Center and being surrounded by you know, all these great violinists from around the world? What was your experience? Uh, of course, it was a nice experience because there was a lot of people from 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 whole world. So, and a lot of people I didn't know. So, <clears throat> very good place. Very good. Uh, so it was very very nice. Um, about uh, I didn't feel like Mario. It's it's like you know it's huge and it's a little bit too huge uh, for me it was okay i had as i remember i had my bike with me so so i i was making a short rides you know mm -hmm. on the evening and in the morning so the the neighborhood is really beautiful mm -hmm. so it's it's good for walks and and i like it because i love nature so for me mm -hmm. But as, as Mario said, for, for five weeks, probably uh, it's not good. Mm -hmm. But for that, uh, for that uh, short time, it's, it's perfect because, mm -hmm. uh, because it's isolated, kind of isolated. So, yeah. so you are really into, into the thing, into, into yeah. the competition or into the workshops. Because yeah. uh, because mm, Zyford competition is is doing the workshops, too, so so it's a very nice thing uh, to work there, yeah. to practice, to 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 meet to meet the people, you know. So so it's it it was really really great time for me. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Bartosz, one of the things that I remember most clearly about the competition in two thousand and fourteen was that apart from the the, the 10 violinists that were there in the music center, there were also 40 accordionists. There was a summer school of accordionists and they were rehearsing all the time, the morning, the afternoon, the night. And I kept hearing the same accordion tunes for four days. It was beginning to drive me a little bit mad, but uh, it was fun as well. It was definitely a, a particular occasion, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I remember the accordion is too. So <laughs> that's true. That's true. Yeah, Mateus, what what are your um, uh, memories of of the experience of of being in the center, and how did you feel about the environment? Uh, you know, I felt a little bit similar, like we all feel right now. <laughs> we are in a closed area <laughs> for <laughs> for too long time. But mm. uh, actually, uh, you know, I love European. Uh, music center of uh, Krzysztof Penderecki. Uh, I recorded a few CDs uh, there because I, I love uh, this, that you are 
cut it from the world. Nobody yeah. can disturb you. So for work, it's excellent place. Uh, also that the internet is not working there well, yeah. it makes you work much more harder than you could even at home in the perfect, <laughs> uh, in the perfect uh, place. So uh, for six, five, six days, it's amazing place. Uh, you can really focus on the work. Mm -hmm. But when you leave this place, you also feel that you are uh, like tired, kind of uh, exhausted. So yeah. this is what I felt after the competition. Mm -hmm. But once again, I would like to say that the, the Luswavice is amazing uh, place in Poland and it, the concert hall is great. And mm -hmm. all technical stuff is amazing. Also people, uh, food, uh, bananas, yeah. uh, all this stuff. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah so, it's a nice, uh, the, the, the dining hall, which is like a, I don't know, like a, a university or a college canteen exactly. where everybody eats together. It's a communal um, experience. You know, it's, and it's, it, the food is good. It's a, a very relaxed um, atmosphere. Yes, you and we all can, we all can talk together. We can mm. speak. We, we can be friends, actually. It's mm. not like the usual competition that we are, we don't know each other. After five days in the same spot, you know, all these people there on the competition and you start new friendships, that's the best. Mm -hmm. And I would like to say one more thing, the competition, I'm not a big fan of the competitions at all. I, I've been only on few, maybe two or three. And uh, for me, the Zypher competition was like excellent prepared and the mm -hmm. atmosphere was amazing. So I think this is, uh, for, in my personal opinion, it's the best uh, prepared competition. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, Bartosz, would you like to add anything to, to that about the standard of the competition, the, the technical team? Oh, uh, Mateusz said, uh, I think everything. I just, yeah. I just uh, say it's, uh, yeah, that's true because uh, concert hall is amazing. It sounds amazing. Uh, mm. Equipment is, is, is very nice. It's one of the best concert halls I've I've ever played. So, mm. so yeah, of course it's well organized. Uh, mm. They are the team is doing uh, a lot, really a lot of work. Uh, mm. So, so it's yeah, it's amazing. I think it's amazing, mm -hmm. okay. uh, and I'm very grateful for that. You know, for the time and for the preparation. So. Mm -hmm. And, and Mario, you've been there twice. Yes. So yes. What, what could you say about the organization of the competition, the way it's run, the, the technical support for the musicians? Uh, about that, what I would have to say, I mean, the, the, the team of people taking care of it are absolutely amazing and they try everything they can to make it the, the best time ever. And they are, take, they are caring about jazz violin and jazz violinist, which is for us a blessing because who cares? I, I don't care even myself. So at least I found that someone who does care. It, it forced me to take in consideration what jazz violin is. And um, and I would just add uh, um, another thing because you talk about food, but no, we had banana because I insisted to have banana. They didn't <laughs> provide banana at the start of the competition. <laughs> then okay. it no no you have to say Matthias. Let's be honest. Yeah, yeah. That's, be, that's true. That we, now since we have banana, which is mm. a, another plus. Now it's a yeah. six star class competition. Okay, so that the bananas are there because that was your personal rider, yes. I mean, I'm not personal because, of course, I was making joke of it. But from the day 200 yeah. bananas came in Luz Lavica center, everybody was eating banana all over. The center became yellow, which was very funny to banana see. Banana center. <laughs> banana center, exactly. Okay. Um, I'd like to talk about um, the, the international profile of this competition. And one of the things that stands out, apart from the incredibly high standard of, of the musicians, and that is the, is the, the panel of judges who, who are judging the competition, which is not an easy thing to do, I'm sure. But it's really an incredible lineup of, of people. You know, over the three editions you've had, well, Mark Feldman's there every year. Um, you've had uh, Glenn Moore. Uh, Mikhail Urbaniak, who's a very funny guy, Eric Friedlander, Dominic Pifarelli, 
uh, this year, I think Miroslav Vitus and Eric Friedlander. And my question is, um, does, does the fact that you have such you know, incredible musicians as judges, is this an, an, an extra attraction about this competition, Mario? Yes, uh, sure. It was nice to meet these people. You hear me still? Yes, yes. 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 It, it was nice to meet them. And, uh, and yes, of course, the selection of the jury also make uh, some importance in the competition because if they were unknown medium level players, so we, uh, I would not have believed in the seriousness of this competition. So yeah. yes, it was clearly right on the point, the right people yeah. from my um, opinion. Okay, Bartosz. Same question. Is that an extra attraction about the competition? Uh, of course, of course. For me, for me, it was because uh, uh, I've met there Mark Feldman, Glenn Moore. So, um, so for sure, for sure, it's, it it is. Uh, yeah, and you can you can you know you can, you can talk with with those guys. Uh, you can play some jams because we mm. were jamming a little bit. Um, you mm -hmm. can exchange experience, so yeah, for sure. Mm -hmm. Okay, and uh, Mateusz, for you, of course, yes. So that's the uh, easy answer. Uh, the jury is very important. If uh, you know, if you are playing for people that you appreciate their music, mm -hmm. uh, for you personally, the competition make uh, it's more important uh, mm -hmm. because uh, you know it's natural. Uh, so the jury was very great, very good musicians that I appreciate them. So for me, the competition from the starting point was a very high level competition. Yeah, okay. Um, I, sh I should have mentioned actually that one of the, the judges from the first edition was um, Janusz Stefanski, of course, the drummer with, with um, Thomas Stankel. And something he, he said in the first edition was that he was very happily surprised um, because of the competition, you know, that there were so many great um, jazz violinists in the, in the world. And he said that he didn't realize there were just so many good jazz violinists. And, and he said that he thought there was a renaissance of jazz violin. And two years ago, John Schofield said something similar about you know the, this renaissance of jazz violin, and I wonder if you guys do you feel this to be true that the jazz violin is is having a, a golden period at the moment? So when I when I went to the competition, I was not interested at all uh, for the other players. I had no idea who are they, and when I went for the competition, I was surprised that there are so many amazing violinists. Actually, I, I never liked uh, violin and jazz. Okay. I preferred other instruments. So mm -hmm. I was never interested in other jazz violinists. Mm -hmm. I was doing my stuff and that's all. But when I heard all other people, they were like uh, amazing, uh, amazing musicians. So I was mm -hmm. really surprised that I won this competition because I thought they're like much better people. Mm -hmm. and. I really adore their music. I was like, wow, what the hell? They're like killing me. <laughs> so uh, yeah, I think these days we have free uh, renaissance of uh, uh, jazz violinists. Uh, I know more of them. I'm more interested in, in, in their work. Uh, and I see it, yes, uh, so many amazing, uh, you can see two of them are sitting there, <laughs> Bartosz and Mario, but uh, also, you know, uh, Florian uh, uh, from Austria, amazing mm -hmm. violinist, Stefan Brown. I, I knew Stefan Brown, the cellist. I'm a mm -hmm. big fan of him for since years. Uh, I mm -hmm. knew him, <laughs> he was the only uh, yeah. player that I knew he's uh, amazing. So really great uh, players all around the world. Yeah, you have to mention uh, David Lubovic, otherwise he won't be very happy with you. <laughs> yeah, of course. Uh, I, I haven't been on the same competition with David, but uh, he's uh, like uh, killing musicians. Yeah. Uh, he, I, I, I really love him. He's playing. Uh, we are in the same band, so we have to <laughs> appreciate our music. If yeah, not, well, we couldn't play together for 10 years <laughs> in the Atoms yeah. Quartet. 
Uh, okay, thanks for that, Matthias. Bartos, do you think there's a, a renaissance of, of jazz violin? And, and have you become more aware of jazz violinists through the competition? Uh, I feel I feel now uh, now it's the situation with jazz violin is is growing. I just want to say one more thing about uh, about jury uh -huh. because there was a very important thing. Uh, there were people who were playing with Zbigniew, uh, so so that was beautiful, you know, to meet yeah. the people who were playing. Uh, with Zbigniew Zeifert and uh, I've met Janusz Stefanski. I mm. had the honor to play with him in his band mm. uh, before he died. So, yeah. so that's amazing too, you know, to meet the people yeah. who are playing with Zbigniew. And mm. and and we we had an opportunity to 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 talk about about Zbigniew, you know, what uh, how how he what he what he was, you know, yeah. so. Mm. But about um, uh, about uh, violent, just violent Renaissance, um, I'm not sure is is it Renaissance or or we have a lot of possibilities to to you know with with uh, internet media mm. now. Uh, so you, we have possibilities to to meet the, the people. I think mm. uh, of course there there is there is a lot of lot of violent play, players now, jazz violent players. Um, and it's like quite normal thing because it was always uh, like 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 that in music, you know. Uh, but it's 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 still not so many violin players, not so many just violin players. But it's growing, I think. It's growing. Uh -huh. hmm. Okay, good. I'd like to um, ask you now about how winning the competition has benefited you. Um, Mario, I'll, I'll start with you. So the, there's the first prize. What was the first prize? Remind me, please. A nine thousand bucks. Uh -huh. And and was there also a recording opportunity? Unfortunately, not. No. Okay. So I mean, do you want to say what you what you did um, after winning the competition? What projects you you? Launched yourself into well. I've been I've been keeping doing my life, uh, my musician life um, in New York. Um, mm -hmm. I mean, for a jazz musician, I would say it was good. I, I slept better because I, I had nine months rent secured, <laughs> so I had better night. No, I mean let's uh, uh, and then uh, and then and then it was good to meet all the people I met through this. Uh, mm -hmm. And actually, also to go every year since about four years in Poland and uh, to work and play with all those people. That was mm -hmm. uh, the the main and the biggest benefit for me, um, mm -hmm. which is what we all search for, which is to meet new people, musicians, colleagues, mm -hmm. uh, and work with. So, okay, great, thank you, um, Bartos. How did the winning the competition help your your career? Uh, of course, uh, whole design for competition crew is 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 helping me. Uh, you know, uh, help helping me all the time because they are they are trying to to make some some concerts, some gigs. Uh, they are organized, so this is very important to to supporting musicians. You know, uh, through the long long time, not not just 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 in time of competition. Mm -hmm. So, um, uh, of course, uh, I for my for my award money, I, I bought some some stuff. You know, I bought some equipment mm -hmm. uh, like new bow, microphone, and mm -hmm. you know all that mm -hmm. violin stuff. Mm -hmm. uh, of course, I paid a uh, ten percent of tax in Poland. <laughs> yeah. So. Uh, yeah, and just yeah, the same as as Mario said, just just uh, support my musicians' life because mm. uh, yeah, you need money. Um, what about from the point of view of of confidence? Did I mean anybody can answer here? But I'll, I'll start with um, Bartosz. Did it give you any renewed sense of confidence or belief? Maybe uh, belief for sure, because I'm always not sure. You know. Uh, that uh, 
that what I'm doing is is okay, you know. Mm. Uh, for me, it's okay, but uh, I don't know. It's it's okay uh, generally. So, mm. so it was it was good. I was very surprised. Uh, I wanted because um, I didn't expect that. I was just mm. doing my 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 best, and mm. and wow, it's for me. It was a lot. For me, it was mm. a lot because the the people from jury uh, told me uh, told me it was it was it was cool so mm. so yeah it means it means a lot it means a lot okay thank you for sharing that and Mateus, same same question to you uh, you know I, I'm always saying that the main price of the competition is actually not uh, the money we are winning it's also of course, it's supporting us, but the more important is support from the uh, Zypher Foundation. And they work, they are working very hard, especially Anetta, uh, yeah. for organizing concerts for us, for all of yeah. us, uh, winners, not only winners, but also people who played on the competition uh, and support from the Bigness Foundation is very big. Yeah. And that's helpful for uh, playing your concerts, for mm -hmm. releasing CDs. They're helping us with yep. selling CDs, promoting that and mm -hmm. speaking about us. So that's very huge work of them. And for me, this is the, the biggest price of winning the competition uh, uh, in my point. And also, you know, when I, uh, when I decide to go for a competition, uh, because as I told you, I'm not a big fan of competition at all. Mm -hmm. But uh, my situation was I disappeared to United States for four years and I, I actually I wasn't in Poland uh, for so, so long time and I decided to come back after work with Turtle Island Quartet and I wanted to let people know, yes, I'm here and uh, I thought maybe the competition uh, would be the best uh, if I would go to the competition and try to win it. And uh, after that, I can tell you, yes, it really helped me to came uh, to come back from States to Poland and again uh, to start my career, a uh, solo career in uh, uh, New York. Yeah, yeah, I think that's a, that's a good answer. Thanks, Mateus. Yeah, I think the, the Spignus Cypher competition is, has two aims, really. And one is to promote the, the legacy of Spignus Cypher, but another major aspect of it is to to promote jazz violinists, cellists and violists as well uh, today to promote their music, to help them in, the, in their careers. And the, the Spignus Seifert Foundation is very active in doing this, as you say, in organizing concerts and helping um, with recordings. And just the fact that, you know, we are here, you guys are here, 2014 winner, 2016, 2018 winner. And here we are in 2020, talking about the competition, talking about the foundation. Uh, uh, I think it reflects very well on this Big Niff Cypher Foundation. They do really fantastic work. Um, guys, I'm done with my questions. Is there anything that you would like to ask each other? Or just to add? <laughs> yes, I would like to ask to Mateo, do you have $200 to give me? I I'll give you about next week because yeah. I have to... Let me first you, ask, Bartosz, you, do you have four four thousand dollars? <laughs> well, you asking me? Yes, yes. Bartosz, you remember last year we this morning yeah. that you owed me, no, but uh, you didn't remember. Yeah, really? <laughs> yeah, Bartosz, no, that, that no, night, no. When, no. <laughs> yeah. Man, if uh, if I you know if I'm not remember something, just. <laughs> <laughs> just, no, we're just write me because it's possible. Don't you remember possible. in New York? You borrow in New York. <laughs> that night. It's it's possible. <laughs> yeah, guys. Uh, uh, I yeah, don't know. I mean, how do you we, how do you we, feel? We, we we are all in a in a. It's a special time right now for humanity, uh, uh, and of course, culture as usual. It's extremely impacted uh, when. Uh, because of a war or when something like this happened. I mean, a pandemic, who could expect an international pandemic right now? Not that I want to speak about COVID, but well, we are musicians and we are clearly into it somehow uh, in our 
job in our musician life. Um, I personally will use this time as good as I can in a way, like I said at the start, that I couldn't when I was uh, mm -hmm. in New York working a lot. But um, I hope personally that we will be able, all of us actually, to do more and to do things um, in Poland or anywhere else, but um, to do some more stuff together. I, I would like to see jazz violin player truly and beautifully collaborate with each other for recording stuff for whatever it is the project, but for doing something interesting where each of them uh, put on the table is specificity because uh, this is what I discovered uh, through this competition is the specificity of each. So, yeah, it would be nice, no? Don't you think so, guys? Yeah. Yeah. Totally. Yeah. Of course. That's that's good I idea. Agree. We need to we need to do do something with it, for sure. Mm. It will be yeah, <laughs> yeah. And, and know, actually, I'm since doing now like COVID yeah. session. <laughs> <laughs> and from time to time, yeah, I'm recording something with other people, and uh, that's fun. It's you know we are home. We can make home studios and record all together. So maybe that's that's a good idea. Yes, I yeah. think we should. Uh, and after should after do all it. this, after all this hard time, we we need to do it live. You know. Actually, yeah. we should do it the three of us since uh, we are invited uh, with Jan to this interview because of having won the the Safed competition. Uh, we should do it even for the Safed Foundation to that's kind true. of gift a song, a gift a. A recorded Agreed. song. So let's uh, let's yeah. talk uh, after that. After that. Okay. <laughs> okay, guys. I think we'll um, unless anybody wants to add anything else, I think we'll we'll call, draw a line under it there. So thank you very much indeed for sharing your your thoughts. It's been very very interesting sharing your time, and uh, all of you stay safe, and you and your so, yeah. families. Uh, keep keep making music, keep thinking about music, and I look forward to seeing you all again in person, uh, playing music, or just if, uh, Mario, when you come to Cork, we'll, we'll share a Guinness together, okay? And please, likewise, at least Patosh one. And Mateusz, I'd love to see you guys over in, in Ireland, uh, and I hope to be back in, in Poland again sometime soon, so I hope to see you guys soon. So uh, from Ireland, it's goodbye from me. Thank you and thank you for thank you so much. Thank Take you guys for, for conversation. Bye -bye. Yeah. Goodbye, Jan, and thank you. Yeah.